new pond algae growth. This also applies to ponds waking up after winter, ponds that have had a thorough cleaning, and pretty much just any pond that's experiencing algae problems. G'day, my name is Kev. The aim of my channel is to help people build and maintain ponds without spending a fortune. If that sounds like something that interests you, feel free to subscribe and check out my website, ozponds.com. This is the view looking down from the living room window into my new pond. If you're wondering about the blue colour, it's pond eye. I put the dye in because this pond is supposed to appear connected to my larger dream pond. The dream pond still has a blue to it after I overdosed it on dye last year, but that's another story. Anyway, I really like the colour now, so that's why I added some to the new pond to make it appear the two ponds are connected. But that's not why we're here. So let's talk new ponds and what we can expect and how we can overcome any algae issues that may arise. You can see that the pond is starting to grow string algae down there in the bottom right. This is perfectly normal and to be expected, especially in an ecosystem pond like this with rock and pebble. If you remember when I built the pond, I didn't wash down the pebble and rock and had a lot of suspended clay in the water, making it all muddy. I then added a flocculant to clump all the clay together and allow a filter sponge inside the intake bay to capture most of it. And some of that clay is simply sunk to the bottom of the pond. The clay provides nutrient and when there's food available, plants will grow. And one of the fastest and most adaptable plants is algae. Even if you don't have the issue with clay, you'll still end up with nutrients. This is a pond in a pot, and as you can see, the water has gone green. This is another form of algae. Nutrients will come from anywhere and everywhere. It could be dust, pollen, leaf litter, fish food, fish poo, mulch. Basically anything that ends up in the pond is a potential nutrient source that will fuel algae growth. So how do you stop it? The honest answer is you don't. What you do is encourage the growth of good bacteria that will outcompete with the algae and bring balance to the pond. You don't want to completely eliminate algae as it's an important part of the food chain and the ecosystem, but you also don't want it to dominate the pond. This is too much. So how do we encourage the bacteria? The first thing is having surface area for the bacteria to live on. These bacteria need to grow on wet surfaces. It's one of the reasons I like to add rock and pebble as it provides more surfaces for bacteria to colonise as opposed to bear ponds. But if you prefer bear ponds, don't worry, bacteria will still colonise the walls of the pond, the pipework, the stems of plants, the leaves of plants, basically anything wet. And of course you should always have some kind of biological filter, which is basically an area that is dedicated to growing these good bacteria and having the water pass through. I like bog filters, they're cheap to create and run, they're also very low maintenance when designed right. This pond is a bear liner pond, but it has a bog filter to grow plenty of bacteria. I have many videos talking about bogs and how to make them for pretty much any size pond, so I'll leave a link in the description to a playlist with all those videos. Also, the biological filter doesn't need to be a bog, there are many different types of biological filters, all are designed to grow good bacteria. The next thing you want to add to the water to help the bacteria thrive is oxygen. To process the nutrients and break down organic materials, the bacteria consume oxygen. This pond has a high flow waterfall spilling into the pond, adding lots of air to the water. This pond has waterfalls, circulation jets and an aerator. Aerators are especially useful on deeper ponds to ensure that all the water is mixing and is oxygenated. Venturis are also a good way to add extra oxygen and they're worth looking into. So plenty of surface area for bacteria, lots of oxygen. Another thing worth knowing is that in colder weather the bacteria are less active. So in summer when the water is warmer and the bacteria are thriving, everything looks great and clean. Whereas in winter and early spring, the same pond has a bit of algae growth. So what you can do in a new pond, or even a pond that's just waking up from winter, is help it along by adding in bacteria. There are many beneficial 
bacteria products available. I'll link a few that I like in the description if you're interested. But remember they will work best if you have plenty of surface area for them to grow on, lots of aeration and water temperatures that are above 10 degrees Celsius, which is 50 degrees Fahrenheit. I find bacteria addition to be useful in new ponds and at the start of the pond season, or even if the pond has had a major clean out, I very rarely use it on my established ponds unless there's any issues. I find that in these ponds the population of bacteria is pretty well established but there's no harm in adding it regularly. Certain fish and animals can also be useful to help eat algae. Carp species like goldfish and koi are omnivores and are very happy eating a predominantly plant-based diet. In this new pond I've added about 30 small goldfish and while there's algae in the pond I won't even think about feeding them. They will eat the algae and any little bugs that land on the water's surface. Also by not feeding I'm not adding extra nutrients into the pond. The algae uses the excess nutrients inside the pond to grow and then the fish eat the algae to grow. It's a simple little food chain. You also don't need to use fish other animals will also consume algae, shrimp, crayfish and tadpoles are all happy with a plant-based diet. I'm still not comfortable adding a crayfish to a liner pond though. So just to summarise, my way of combating algae in a new pond, or pretty much any pond, is to make sure there's plenty of bacteria. Also make sure there's plenty of oxygen entering the water. And I'm not overfeeding the fish. If there's algae, they have food. And I'll also add bacteria supplements regularly for the first year or two. That's how long I find a pond takes to really hit its stride and become self-sufficient. Now even in doing all this, it's still quite possible that this pond and stream is going to experience algae like this. But over time it will find its balance, they always do. You just have to have patience. I also probably should have mentioned higher order plants and their role in being able to remove nutrients and add oxygen, but in all honesty the bacteria is a far more reliable ally. But if you want to learn more, I did make a video on plants and filtration, so I'll link that down in the description as well. Anyway, I hope this video has been somewhat helpful, if it was feel free to tickle the thumbs up button. Thanks for watching, see ya.